people will manage the the time on that. And I would call Jamie Rainey. You can come up to the to the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for your time tonight. I'm gonna to be brief. I know that time is limited. I am not going to say the name of any children. I'm not going to mention any staff. Um, I, I do wanna bring up something that, that uh, was brought to my attention by a group of children who are in the school. Um, they had mentioned their discomfort with a particular piece of uh, learning material, a book. And I got a chance to see it. I did see it up at the high school and was pretty shocked I am um, very shocked. <laughs> um, I took that information back. I showed it to as many people as I possibly could um, and decided that I needed to see the book again, as well as the curriculum previous um, to this book. I understand this book was purchased in July of this year. Um, when I looked at the book again, um, I'm going to talk about what was what I saw that was in there that I had concerns about. And, and, um, you know, information about the sex lives of college students, including how many times they engaged in vaginal, oral, and anal sex in the last 30 days and in the last year, pornography, safe sex in cyberspace, outer course, which is non-penetrative penetrative sex. I'm sorry, I'm speaking not, yeah, having a little trouble here. Uh, fetishism, exhibitionism, voyeurism, um, asking students how they compare with the statistics about masturbation. Um, there was a section on friends with benefits as well as hooking up fantasy, uh, sharing a statistic about like 90% of girls have lost their virginity by the time they were 18. And I can't imagine as a student reading that, how I would feel, um, all of these things, um, a section about fantasy, a section on friends with benefits, as well as hooking up. Um, explaining the four stages of coming out, uh, referring to the students' online resources, uh, referring the students to online resources um, that don't mention parents. I think that that is probably a dangerous precedence to set. Um, ex uh, a section about the gender spectrum, which shares how we've evolved beyond two genders, defining and discussing, discussing transgender, uh, side gender, bisexual, pansexual, um, et cetera. Um, saying that bisexual and lesbians drink more than heterosexual fe females, which I think is a very odd thing to say. And I think that's a weird assumption to make. I don't know about you. Um, tips for creating a healthy sex life. And again, we are talking about minors. Um, beyond, and I mean, that is not an exhaustive list. So I, I feel kind of, I, I hate to say this in a public forum, but this is what was in the book. Um, questioning students if they've had their vaccines, including the COVID shot, and discussing uh, rational suicide and the right to die. Um, I think rational suicide is especially given the state of mental health, you know, over for students over the last however long. Um, I think that's kind of a, I think parents should be involved in this. And there were only enough of those books to be left in the classroom. So they never would have come home. And I never would have known about this unless students told me about it. Um, that That is worrisome to me. I did get the chance to look at a uh, board meeting from the 13th of September, uh, 2021, and about the two hour and 15 minute mark, there are some questions about, hey, you know, parents want to be reassured that these kinds of things are not making it into the curriculum. These kinds of things are not making it into the textbooks and the materials that we our students have access to. And they did. Um, we were told in that there was a section in there where the where there was a response that was like, hey, we have a process in place. It's the IF policy. And you guys got to review a math book. So, you know, don't worry. You, you get to review everything. Um, but what I found is in that policy, if you look online, and I never would have looked at it except for what happened with this and hearing that board meeting. But that policy talks about a $20,000 limit. And so I guess because this was under $20,000 is what I was told that it didn't need to be reviewed. I, I have a lot of concerns. I have a lot of questions. I've had some questions I put forward and I'm so grateful that you answered those, but I still have questions like, where was this funded? Who approved this? You know, thing, I still have questions that haven't been answered. Um, I am grateful that this was acted on quickly, but what I can tell you for sure is that from the time school started until it was pulled, which is around the 27th, I believe, students saw it. That's how I found out. They saw it. And they read, they, they can read. They're not, 
they're not blind. They read it. It's it's disturbing. <laughs> Um, in that meeting from the 13th, it talked about how uh, we want our students to have uh, been with well, it wasn't benevolent wasn't the word that was used, but an education where you would not know which side, you know, somebody which political side. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for coming in to speak. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, thanks for coming in and expressing your concern. Thank you, Jamie. We appreciate you. Uh, moving on to Charlotte O'Hara. Thank you. Charlotte O'Hara, 15712 Windsor Street, Overland Park. I'm a taxpayer in the Spring Hill School District. I own property at 178th and Lackman. And uh, so I was informed about this book, and the name of the book is An Invitation to Health. And um, I'm extremely impressed with Jamie Rainey that she took it upon herself, a mother took it upon herself to, to investigate this and to research this, and that after two visits with, um, with staff, that it was, it was quickly removed. But I have a background in education, degree in education. I homeschooled. I can't believe that this type of uh, curriculum would be I mean, it's just beyond my wildest dreams that this would be in Spring Hill. And you're talking about community standards. I have knocked on a lot of doors in Spring Hill, and I will tell you that this does not adhere to the community standards of Spring Hill. If parents, if parents were really aware as to what was in this book, this room would be packed with parents, and they would be beyond furious. The, the subject matter that Jamie presented, it's in there. And I really wanted a hard copy of the book. And I know that Jamie requested a hard copy of the book and that she was denied that because they said that they had to send all of the textbooks back. So if there is some way that Jamie can get a copy of that, I think that, that would be very, very helpful. And, um, and then, so after this, I went, I wanted to go out and check to see um, if in your library that you had some of these horrendous books that are in the Blue Valley School District and the Shawnee Mission School District. So I went out, but I can't access what is in your collection. And I have been at Blue Valley School Board meetings where books have been challenged and all about the collection and no one's responsible and this, that, and the other. I'm telling you, these, these books are horrendous. So this is, I would like to know, A Court of Mist and Fury. Let me go, I'm at the wrong place. A Court of Mist and Fury. All Boys Aren't Blue. Empire of Storms. Flamer. Fun House, Gender Queer. Oh, that's a really good one. That's abhorrent. I mean, it's beyond abhorrent. And that is in both Shawnee Mission and Blue Valley. And I'm hopeful that it is not in yours. Let's talk about it. That's another really horrible one. Living Dead Girl, Carnival at Bray, and this book is gay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. We are the adults. And for some reason, it seems like that we can't stand up and say that these types of books and materials are absolutely not appropriate for minors. You could not read this, these books on radio or broadcast TV because the FCC would say that they are indecent and obscene. But yet, and this in the curriculum and in, in, in this in this health book, same thing. You could not have read it on a radio station or broadcast TV. What is that saying about us? It is time that we are the adults 
and that we can stand up and we can say that we have community standards and that this is not gonna stand. I'm working on this at the public libraries in, in Johnson County because these books are also available for young adults, which is 13 through 17, really. I keep telling people, adults, that, that does not get to be used by anyone until they're 18, and then it's very tenuous. So I'm, I appreciate that this book was pulled very quickly. I challenge you to make sure that the curriculum that is in this these school in these schools in the Spring Hill schools and in the in the libraries that they adhere to community standards and that we are not putting pornography in the minds of our children. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Charlotte, would you mind emailing the list of that to our board clerk? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, you did. I tried to write them down as fast as I Who should I, who should I email it to? Rachel. Moving on to 